quiet quitting. This is definitely a topic that you've heard of recently, whether it's on the news, on different YouTube channels, or from other creators that you follow. I actually made a video on my second channel about this topic from a general point of view, but I did want to make a specific video on quiet quitting on this channel, specifically talking about how it pertains to tech and cybersecurity jobs, as well as share some of my perspective on the phenomenon or just the rise in popularity of the term itself, as well as how it potentially impacts employees versus employers. So just to give you guys a little bit of background about myself to give you an idea of what my perspective is coming from. So if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Sandra, and I've currently been working in cybersecurity for almost about three years now. So I'm someone who is very much in their early career and as well as being one of the older Gen Zs to first join the workforce. So I definitely think that quiet quitting can come from a different place when it comes to Gen Z and millennials versus the older generation that may already be in the workforce and have been in the workforce for 10, 20, 30, 40 plus years. I'm also currently working in tech. I work as a cybersecurity analyst and I've had experience working in my previous company which is a fortune 50 company it was a very large company and now i'm currently working at a much smaller company that i think definitely adds to my perspective around this topic but first off going into the topic itself of quiet quitting so if you watch the various videos on the definition of quiet quitting especially the cnbc one which i think was very popular and personally i didn't agree with most of the points made in that video, but essentially what quiet quitting means is doing the bare minimum of your job, not going above and beyond, not answering emails late at night, not working on weekends. It, honestly, I feel like the video itself had some very dystopian vibes considering that they were expecting employees to want to go above and beyond and put in the 60, 70 hours a week and not get paid extra for it, not get paid overtime, and in many cases, not even get the recognition from their employers, which we've seen time and time again where people put in a lot of extra effort into their jobs and don't get very much out of it, let alone career growth or salary growth or promotions. So personally, I feel like the term quiet quitting itself has such a negative connotation. It sounds like you're not doing anything at work. Quiet quitting just makes it seem like you're actually quitting, you're not doing much, you're being lazy essentially. But I really feel like the term was coined like this to be kind of like a hot topic. And personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing what you are paid to do. Um, if you're paid to do the 40 hours a week, the project that you're working on, the assignments that you have, I personally don't think that it's right for an employer to expect you to want to go above and beyond and put in 60 hours a week just because you want to get on their good side. And I mean, I'm sure there are people out there who are trying their hardest at their jobs and working towards a promotion or working towards that salary increase. And everyone is in different stages of their life and different stages of their career. But I also don't think there's anything wrong with, with someone who is doing their job adequately and successfully and without handholding and without having to lean on their other teammates to do their extra work or pick up their slack. Obviously, I think that's where you may draw the line where if you're doing less than what you are expected to do, then it may be an issue because then you're making your teammates pick up the extra work that you're not doing or maybe even your manager. But for the most part, the term itself for quiet quitting, which is essentially just doing the work that you're supposed to be doing, I personally don't think there's anything wrong with that. Obviously, like I mentioned before, it depends on where you are in your career, but I really feel like the media has really villainized this group. It's not even a movement because there are many comments, which if you guys haven't watched the video, I would really recommend watching it just to give you some perspective. But it was essentially about how employers are, are feeling gypped off or betrayed that their employees aren't going above and beyond and responding to emails on weekends and having a report ready at 9 a.m. on a Saturday. And I feel like these all seem a little bit like unreasonable requests. I know that there's been a huge shift for work-life balance and, and just being more cautious about the boundaries that people set for work versus their personal life. And employers have really overstepped those boundaries for a long time. And I don't think that's necessarily a trend that's gonna go away completely, but I do think that it's just really interesting that this topic has become so popular after the pandemic where Again, one of the things I noted in my previous video is the fact that a lot of the reasons why people are following this quiet quitting trend is because of all of the burnout, all of the overworking that happened during the pandemic while people were working from home and there weren't those clear separations or boundaries between this is my working hours and this is my personal hours because most people weren't adjusted to working from home and because there was no clear time to leave the office, for example, like a daily commute, it was really hard to step away from work and a lot of people found themselves just completely indulged in their work, even on weekends and during evening hours. So I really think just based on root cause analysis, the reason why so many people are choosing to quiet quit or just essentially just do their job, I really feel like quiet quitting just has such a negative connotation that I personally don't like using that phrase, but 
because that's the term that people are using nowadays and again this isn't a new thing apparently people have been doing this for a very long time there are lots of people who just go to their jobs work their nine to five hours and go home and don't think about work afterwards um it's really a balance that some people can set more easily than others so it's definitely not a new phenomenon it just has like a brand new fancy name attached to it that makes people want to talk about it but i really feel like with all the things that happened over the pandemic especially when it came down to people thinking about their actual work-life goals. For example, if you're working in a job for 10 plus years and maybe you got laid off during the pandemic, but you thought that you were gonna stay at the shop for a very long time, you gave a lot of loyalty to your employer, you worked those late nights, you worked those weekends, and at the end of the day, you still got laid off. Obviously, that can definitely hurt someone if the expectations were just different between what you thought your employment would look like versus what it actually was. So I feel like that in general, definitely burn some people and in terms of their outlook towards their employers and even potential future employers which can also cause a bit of distrust especially when you're the one putting in those overtime hours always going the extra mile always keeping your managers and your teammates happy and of course not even to mention the things like what people were going through personally during the pandemic whether it was with their loved ones like their friends or family or maybe someone that was really important to you is no longer here anymore and that in general can just completely shift your worldview and your perspective on what work means and what it means to live to work versus work to live. And I think that topic in general has really just gotten more front of mind into people's heads where they're thinking about their actual outlook on how they want to live their life. Do they want to spend 40 years working behind a desk, working for a corporation that could let them go at the next recession? Or do they want to try some other things or maybe take on some other hobbies or focus more on their life outside of work, like their children, their family, their spouses, their friendships, which let's be honest, a lot of people kind of let those things fall to the wayside while things get busy at work and while they're focusing on growing in their careers and focusing on getting that promotion or getting that salary or getting that fancy new job. Sometimes the important things in life, like family, friends, hobbies, uh, personal wellness, those things all slip to the side while you are working and kind of devoting your life into your work. And people, I think, are really opening their eyes to that, where they're kind of realizing that they may have overlooked certain things in their life that they want to get back into or, or want to start kind of preparing or focusing on. And that may be another reason why people are deciding to kind of shift their perspective and focus, focus more on that work-life balance that people will talk about so often. But don't often achieve and of course this whole thing is just being really sensationalized i feel like by different news outlets because it's just a very click worthy topic i'll admit i am definitely one of those people who've gone down a rabbit hole of reading articles about this um, i've watched many youtubers talk about it i've watched many news articles on their youtube channels talk about it because if you worked any job in general in your life then you've probably had some experience where maybe there was at one point you're past that for a promotion even though you put in all this extra work or maybe you didn't get the raise that you wanted or expected Expected, or maybe you got laid off during a recession and a lot of these things really just sit in the back of people's minds and this topic in general can really make you think about about the reasons why you are working so hard towards a goal but one thing that I do wish was a little bit different is just the way that the media portrays it where it really just seems like they are villainizing the employees for not wanting to devote their entire lives or every hour of the week to their jobs or being at their manager's beck and call anytime they message them at nine o'clock at night or over the weekend or during vacation and honestly i'm sure many people have had these things happen to them and it's kind of like a norm nowadays so i definitely think that it's a bit unfair for the way that quiet quitting has just been portrayed and talked about in different videos i don't think that employers should expect them to take on an extra project or work an extra 10 20 hours a week or respond during non on-call hours their main goal is obviously productivity and their bottom line and making an income so if they're able to hire employees that do go above and beyond and for the same amount of pay as someone who is doing just the bare minimum which is again their normal actual work hours for 40 hours a week the projects that they're assigned then obviously they want to go for the person who is going above and beyond for that lower rate because they're going to get more work out of them honestly this is just capitalism i don't think there's i don't think there's anything here that i can really talk about that'll change anything but i think just talking about it from that perspective definitely just helps frame the situation a lot more and i'm sure there are employees who maybe aren't pulling their weight but i'm sure there are also employers who aren't doing well by their employees there's always going to be those bad eggs in 
either side and obviously the career implications are going to affect the employee a lot more than an employer especially during a market downturn which a lot of people have talked about that this recession is going to be a very big one in the news so all these things are definitely things to keep in mind going through this phase of the rising popularity of this topic as well as topics like layoffs hiring freezes and everything else that comes out of the topic of recessions. I'm sure this goes without saying, but there are definitely going to be some kind of career implications for those who choose to just do their job versus those who are going and exceeding their expectations. The person going above and beyond may be in line for a promotion or a salary increase faster than someone who is just doing their bare minimum job, which again, there technically is nothing wrong with because you're paid to do that job. And, and if you're successfully doing that job, then you shouldn't be penalized for it, but you probably aren't also going to gain a promotion promotion or or get a big bump at the end of the year based on the work that you're doing which definitely is fair but i do think that another side of things is the fact that many times or a lot of times there are people who are going above and beyond and are working towards that next salary increase or promotion but don't end up getting it even if they expected to or even if they already had conversations about it or were promised some kind of salary increase during a recession it just may not happen even without having a recession it may not happen and i think that is another reason why why lots of employees can feel a little bit disappointed in their end of year bonuses or their performance goals or performance review at the end of the year so it really is a double-edged sword depending on how you look at it whether it's from an employee perspective or an employer's perspective and of course this finally comes down to finding a good balance for both parties obviously i'm not going to sit here and say that i don't resonate with any of the things that employees are saying about quiet quitting but i also feel like just pointing fingers at either parties probably isn't going to be the most helpful. I think finding a balance, finding a balance between the two and for employers to make their company a place that people want to thrive and want to grow and to know that if they have these outlined X, Y, Z steps, that they're going to be able to get promotion or that they're going to be able to get that salary increase and that their managers are continuously having those conversations with them on, hey, you're on track for this promotion. You're not on track. You need to pick up X, Y, Z to be able to be on track. And then of course, the most important part, actually following through on their promises and providing them that promotion that the employee actually worked hard for i think that is a key thing that is going to really help and be a recipe for success for both parties and then of course for employees to be able to feel comfortable setting those boundaries with their employer and telling them these are the hours i'm able to respond to anything urgent these are the main hours i work during the day and i won't be replying back to emails or communications after these hours or even just having that flexibility of hey i have to pick up my kids from school at three o'clock so maybe i can start my work day at 7 a.m and be able to leave at three and any extra work that i need to finish up i can finish up after i pick up my kids and i'm sure there are employers out there who are very understanding and who are able to work with those flexible hours but i'm sure there are also some employers who don't have that kind of flexibility in this case your manager and your company culture in general is, is going to be a huge factor in how this impacts you and Honestly, I feel like this probably goes without saying, but I feel like it just needs to be said. The fact that if your company isn't able to value you as a person and understand that you have needs and boundaries and uh, responsibilities outside of your work obligations, then maybe it's time to look for a different employer that is able to resonate with you and understand your goals for your career, as well as your goals for your family, your friendships, your hobbies outside of work that you're a well-rounded person that that isn't just a working robot that was created to make money for a corporation i feel like as long as that understanding is there i feel like that just makes things a whole lot easier for people to understand each other and see that at the end of the day everyone just wants what's best for themselves and what's best for their family and their loved ones and no one wants to wake up one day at 80 years old and realize that they spent 60 years of their life giving their time to a company and and maybe not being as close to their children or close to their spouse as they used to be or as they wanted or maybe losing friends and family along the way and then opening their eyes decades down the line maybe realizing that they didn't live the life that they truly wanted to live and i know this is going a little bit deep on a topic about quiet quitting but i really feel like it comes down to these human fundamentals like the basic needs that humans want out of their lives and not all of it is about career related goals and that's coming from someone who is very focused on their productivity and just their outlook on their career in general. Hopefully this gave you guys some kind of insight into what's going on in my mind about quiet quitting and just the implications of it on your career as well as as well as why it's such a big topic right now. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. I know this isn't a holistic video, but hopefully it kind of 
gave some opinions um, that maybe resonate with you. Maybe you completely disagree. I don't know. But again, feel free to start a conversation in the comments below. I really think it'll be an interesting one, especially with this audience who is who is also you know just getting started in their careers. A lot of you guys are college students or bootcamp students or in their early careers and just starting to decide whether or not cybersecurity is a good career for you or just a tech career in general. And talking about topics like this can really put into perspective what you may want out of your career and those boundaries that you want to set early on so that you can be more mindful about, about what to expect out of your employer and, and just your day job in general. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. This is definitely a really interesting topic to me, so I would love to hear what you guys think. And sorry for the sirens. I am currently in the city. All right, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. It would really, really help out my channel and to get this content out to other people who may be interested in tech careers. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!